All right, we're here with the interim head coach for North Carolina Central University football, Granville Eastman. Coach, thanks for joining us today. And if you could just start off with an opening statement. Well, first of all, thank you all for, uh, for being here this afternoon. Um, I, I want to say thanks, for, first of all, to, uh, to Chancellor Kinley for this opportunity um, to be the next head football coach of NCCU. Also want to uh, extend a, a real heartfelt thank you to uh, Dr. Ingrid Rooker McCree, our athletic director, um, for her continued support of me and this football staff and this football program. Just want to say, you know, publicly thank you to her. Um, also to our football staff and our players, um, their loyalty and their, uh, their, you know, their, their, their substance just to continue um, on this journey that we started under Coach Mack and to move this program forward. Their support has been tremendous. And so I want to say thank you publicly to them as well. And it's to all the alumni and the Eagle Nation out there. Uh, the, the overwhelming support over the last few days of alums just calling in saying, Coach, we're behind you 100%. Um, you know, uh, you, you, we've got your back. Things of that nature has been great. So I uh, just want to say uh, to all those folks, thank you. I uh, appreciate this opportunity. It's not something I take for granted. And I look forward to this journey together. Coach, can you just take us through um, the process of, was there like an interview process? And uh, when did you get the good news? How did that conversation go? Um, well, the, uh, the, there wasn't an interview process. Uh, uh, like you know, Kyle uh, mentioned earlier that uh, uh, these are some matters of um, personnel being a state institution. I'm not going to get into the process a whole bunch. Uh, I was grateful on December 8th that uh, Chancellor Akinle and Dr. McCree offered me the uh, head coach position, and I uh, graciously accepted and moved on, moved forward from there. Other than uh, switching down to the big office, what's the biggest change for you so far? <laughs> Great question. It's been a whirlwind, as you might imagine. I can tell you what. Um, I, I was just reflecting on that the other day. It's been about budgets. <laughs> it's been about uh, alumni and uh, just planning. Uh, that those, those are the, 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 the biggest things that I've had to uh, um, uh, you know, encounter so far and budgets, speaking engagements with alumni, and uh, uh, that's what's uh, obviously going to be newer than what I've done in the past. And these interviews as well. <laughs> done a few of them are you know in the last couple of days. So, have you uh, had a meeting with the uh, coaching staff yet? Yes, as a matter of fact, um, December 8th, uh, when the news uh, was made by the school, uh, Dr. McCree actually met with the staff and she outlined um, to them that the support of the entire administration behind our football program. And uh, she told us how to give us an outline on how you know uh, to go about informing our student athletes that the school is behind the program 100% behind their coaches. And uh, just to uh, let them know that we're going to continue you know, building our brand and, and building our program in the direction it's been going. Obviously, the players have scattered. They were going on break. Well, how many of those guys have you reached out to and talked to the last couple of days? Well, as you know, uh, I was uh, working closely with the safeties. Those are my positions. So I was responsible for contacting each and every one of them. Um, we texted. We phone called. I had a voice conversation with just, I believe, all 11, 12 who are returning. And some of the offensive players who are still around, Stephen Perry, uh, a couple of linemen came up and shook my hands, congratulated me. Uh, some others texted in that were, you know, that had already gone home for the break. Quite a few former players, some of our graduating players, um, Reggie Hunter, Antonio Brown, and those guys all, uh, LeGrand Harley, they shook my hand, came by, said congratulations. So it's been a mixture on both sides of the ball. I have not been able to connect with just everyone just yet, but the uh, congrats are continuing to come in. What is your um, <clears throat> your your big goal for the players who come and play underneath you? Is it is it that they leave with championships, with a degree, with the skills to be a good father, husband, employee? What do you want them to leave with? Well, that's a great that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Um, my whole thing is going to be it's really a two prong approach. Um, first and foremost, I, I want to make sure that, that that we enhance the student athlete experience. That I've always said, and I've said to the coaching staff, I want to make sure that we give these young men something that when they leave here, you know, they're going to look back and say, you know what, uh, I was here at Central, I had a good time, I received a great education, uh, we won a lot of football games, but in addition to that, they gave me this. And I'm about building young people up and giving them certain tools um, as they go into the workforce, how to conduct interviewing techniques, how to you know, uh, uh, be careful about your appearance, um, understand that there's a responsibility for your behavior, accountability, those sort of things, and things that go along in, in, in that nature. That's what I want to make sure that's, uh, that's instilled in them by the time they leave here. Coach, uh, you know, you are the interim coach for the 2018 season, so how do you remove that tag uh, along with uh, preparing the team for the 18 season and 
win a bunch of games? Well, I tell you what, uh, the best advice I received uh, in regards to that particular question, thank you for asking that, was from our chancellor. And he said, Coach, my advice to you as a, as a person who's gone through this process before is be the head football coach like you're going to be here for years to come. And that's what I plan on doing. Um, uh, the other things are going to kind of take care of themselves. Coach Jerry Mack has built a great foundation here. Uh, the coaches understand our program. The players understand our program. I think we're to the point where we understand expectations. So we're going to move forward in, in that direction where there's a clear understanding that we want to have success on and off the field. There are a lot of things in place. And the outcomes are going to take care of themselves. What did you have to, um, I guess, re-recruit first? Was it the guys who already committed? Uh, returning players or the coaching staff? Just another great, that's another great, great question. I was asked that before, and I'll tell you what has happened in this place in my time here. We have become such a successful program, not that we have fully arrived, but NCCU is at the point in the neighborhood that we're at where we kind of, we almost, it, it sells itself. And so a lot of the, uh, the commits, uh, young, men that, uh, young men that had visited during the season, that enjoyed the experiences while they were here, it was just that. They enjoyed the family atmosphere, they enjoyed the education that we had to offer. So even though the head coach had changed, it was about the brand. It was about what we offered and the opportunity. So there wasn't any real convincing, there was no real having to recommit or, or, or uh, a lot of the young men that were in the boat have stayed in the boat and the ones who are coming to visit in, uh, in January and this weekend are still coming to visit. So nothing has really changed. I'd be very pleased with that. I think that's a good indication of where we are as a program and what NCCU has become. So those, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, those young men who you were talking about there uh, have already been committed. They've been sold on NCCU. The ones in the future who you have to sit down in the living room and sell them on this school, what are you going to say? How are you going to sell this program? Well, I'm going to say some of the things I've, we kind of already spoke about. I'm going to tell them about my vision for, for them as young men, that uh, we want to make sure that they're well-rounded, that, uh, of course, we're, you love to play football. You're coming here to play football as, as part of the uh, student-athlete experience. We know we're going to win football games. We'll be very focused in that area. But in addition to that, that uh, you know, my focus is going to be is, you know, what kind of young person are you developing and, and character-wise? You know, what are we doing for you as far as giving you tools so that you will, uh, you'll be equipped when you leave this college environment to succeed in the workforce, become a better parent, husband, so on and so forth. Um, that's going to be my, my pitch to them and, 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 and their parents as well. I, I would like for their, their parents to see us somewhat of, of myself in them down the road. If I can portray that, then I think, um, then I think we're on the right track. Can you speak on the part of, uh, you know, how lucky you are, you know, sometimes, you know, when an interim coach or a coach takes over, it's in a situation where a team may have won one or two games and you got to build it up. You don't have to build this up. So uh, what kind of situation are you stepping into here? Yeah, well, you know, obviously I'm a very blessed man from where I sit for a whole host of reasons. But, um, you know, I'm kind of sitting in a situation of don't mess it up, you know, if I can just be very frank. Uh, we, like I said, we, we've got some really good things in place. Uh, speak, first of all, starting with the administration and the support that comes over from the top. And then if you look at our coaching staff, you know, I, I sat down, we, we spoke at length um, uh, in our staff meeting. I told those guys how important they were to me and this program, uh, that I look at them all as power players. And uh, the impact that they have on this program, their, their relationships with the young men, and then the players. You know, under Coach Max's guidance, we have been able to recruit a good crop of student athletes, some athletic guys who um, could do some special things on the football field. So there are a lot of things in place, and I'm very well aware of that. And uh, looking forward to the challenge of uh, making sure that we, you know, just go, sorry, go forward and uh, and uh, grow together and continue to be successful. Can we, can we pause for a sec while we fix that? I'm sorry. Sorry about that. No problem. All right, go ahead. Who, who takes? your spot as defensive coordinator, are you going to hire outside or you haven't even thought about that yet? Well, that's a good question. I have thought about it. I have thought about it. It did not take me very long to come to a decision. I think one of the biggest selling points or um, obvious reasons that I rem I'm in this chair now is that, uh, as I said before, we have a good football staff, we have a good thing going. It's continuity. Uh, there are a lot of things in place. And, uh, you know, I thought and thought, I, you know, I'm going to run around and, uh, you know, the kids, uh, we're all creatures of habit. And our kids, especially our defensive kids, they, they react certain ways to certain things and did not want any disruption. 
Everyone is comfortable in my leadership role as a defensive coordinator. We understand the expectations from, uh, from not just an overall performance, but from each position coach. So I did not want to disrupt that camaraderie, that continuity at this time. So some of these already on staff? No, I'm saying it's going to be me. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, you're going to stay the defensive coordinator? I am the defensive coach, coordinator, and I'm the safeties coach. And we're going to, I'm not going to call it defense here publicly, but we're going to run what we've been doing. Do you think it's going to be like a heavier workload on you? I'm sure there is. I'm, I'm sure there is. I, I, I fully anticipate that. And um, uh, the good thing about where we are at this point in time in the program is having to, after having been together for four years as a staff, um, we we we've, we kind of know where the where the breaks are. We know where we, procedurally we know how to put everything together. I'm going to count on that experience that that's going to allow me to understand you know when I can pull away and address to the head coaching responsibilities and when I'm very conf confident in our assistant coaches, all three of them that in my absence they can put things together. You know there are times where for personal reasons and whatnot I may not have been in the in the room or the or, or watching film for other reasons, you know, maybe Coach Mack had me, and someone else had to conduct, uh, had to keep things going, and, and and that's how we're going to operate. I don't foresee any drop off in anything. I think we'll be fine. This is 100 percent clear. You're still going to call the defense. 100 percent clear. I'm going to call the defense. Are you about this whole experience? Are you nervous or excited right now? A little bit of both. A little bit of both. I cannot lie to you. A little bit of both. I uh, but I'm embracing it. I'm embracing it. This is um, over 20 years of college, co college coaching experience in the making. It is a dream come true, um, and uh, uh, I embrace it. I know what we're what we're working with. I, I couldn't be in a better place. Uh, you talk first and foremost about a community that's embraced the school, all right, and an alumni nation that is just to me becoming rabid about their football program and their athletics program having success, and um, you know that brings some obvious visibility to the community. And on a national stage, and so I myself couldn't be in a better in a better situation. So I'm going to I'm going to embrace this journey. I'm going to embrace the process, and uh, with every fiber of my being, I'm going to do the best job I possibly can. I uh, <clears throat> excuse me again. Thinking back to last season, uh, one time I remember you on the sideline. I forgot what game it was, but I remember you grabbed that um, turnover belt. Yeah. And you were jumping up and down and, and just all into it. Yeah. Um, what? What kind of personality? What's your coaching style? What do you think your players would say if I asked them, what's your personality? Well, they would tell you, I'm a disciplinarian. You know, I'm a disciplinar disciplinarian at first. They, 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 they can, at first, and they, but they also tell you, you know, Coach Eastman can get excited about certain things. I like it when young men, when young men succeed in doing what we ask them to do. I, I look at coaching as a function of teaching. As a teacher, you prepare your students for their tests, and then when they go out and they execute the test the way you kind of explain how it would unfold, you can't fit, help but feel uh, satisfaction and, and, and gratification for them and a, and, a, and a sense of fulfillment. And so that's what that was about. That was the, that was, I told you that if you were in this position, this play would happen this way. They went out, they executed it. And so I, I just thought it was an opportunity to celebrate with them in that moment. I want to show them that side. Like, hey, I can get geeked too about things that we do the right way when we plan it and execute it the right way. And I'm not going to be so happy when things don't really go the way I told you it should be going, and you're doing, you're deviating from that. So that's what that was about. You mentioned you're a disciplinarian. Last year, discipline wasn't one of the central strong points. See a lot of, a lot of flags, a lot of personal fouls. What can you do to change? What would you do personally to change that in 2018? Well, I think you know, um, sometimes success can lead to some blind spots. And sometimes, you know, there's, uh, like I said earlier, about expectations. And, um, you know, there's expectations from coaches and players. I think sometimes, though, you, 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 um, you have success and you're not uh, aware of some blind spots where some things just haven't shown up, and they did. And I think that what that boils back down to is uh, you may have veered off a little bit from accountability and, and responsibility. So I think it's got to start with the coaching staff. You know, there's a saying in coaching, um, you know, if you see it on the field, you're either coaching it or you're allowing it to happen. And I think it's got to start first and foremost with coaching. And then it goes back to what the chancellor said, that everybody, student athletes, need to be responsible for their actions. Uh, that's on and off the football field. And uh, that's something that we were very, very big on, 2014, 2015. And with success, we thought there was an understanding. Uh, we failed to remember that uh, we're dealing with 18 to 21 year olds. And uh, so therefore, uh, there's going to have to, have to uh, backtrack a little bit and reemphasize this is how we got to this point.
and uh, there won't be any steps backwards for a lack of emphasizing um, accountability and responsible for your actions, and then teach the proper way going forward from there. In the last, I guess, six or seven days, have you talked to Coach Mack? What did you talk to him before you left? Yeah, I've spoken to Coach Mack just about every day, um, just about every day. Um, he's settling in well over at Rice. He's, he's looking for the opportunity. You know, I told him I'd be reaching out from time to time about, hey, where do you find this here and who do you call here for that? And, he said, and, 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 and Jerry's been nothing but great and good to me. I cannot, uh, I cannot talk enough of him. You know, he's, uh, he's like a younger brother to me. We are good friends. And uh, he knows he can count on me for anything, anything. He and Star, they've, uh, they've embraced me, not just in the coaching arena, but outside of coaching on a, on a personal level as well. And I, I, I suspect that that relationship as friends is going to continue for a long, long time to come. Uh, you spoke about your players on and off the field. Yeah. You off the field in your personal life, I know coaches don't get a lot of downtime, but when yeah. you do have downtimes or uh, moments of downtime, uh, what do you do? What do you enjoy doing? <laughs> That's a great question. I'm like those old coaches, you know, Bobby Bowden and some of those legends who they really don't have a hobby. I am blessed, and I guess I'm cursed in that football is my hobby and my profession. And so, um, you know, I, I can be a bit of a TV junkie. I binge on, on, on some things at downtimes, but a lot of times I'm always, uh, uh, my mind is working about how can we take the next step? How can we get better in this area? How can we improve? You know, as a coordinator, you can only do so much, but I suspect now as a head football coach, uh, I'll have the uh, the opportunity to move some things forward, to do some things, my, my own ideas and things of that nature. And that's re what's really going to fulfill a lot of that time. I'm a, I'm a football junkie. I really don't do much else outside. My wife will tell you, you know, that uh, she, uh, she'll, she, she's always just saying, that's all he does is football, 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 football. And so, uh, unfortunately, that's, that's, that's why I am. But I feel blessed. To you have said, that, you said at times you could be a TV junkie. What are some of your favorite shows? Oh, um, I'm a sports enthusiast. You know, I'm, I'm really a I'm really a big sports guy. You know, anything that's sports related, um, anything that uh, uh, that's uh, nonfiction. You know, uh, you know, uh, NFL, you know, NFL Network has a football life. You know, what I'm saying so. If it's Marshall Falk or whoever's going to come up, Eric Dickerson. You know, uh, uh, in the summertime. I just line those up where I have time, and I'll just watch episode after episode after episode. Things that kind of run parallel with real life uh, achievements and things like that is what I'm, I'm into. This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.